Awesome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jesse Rowe. I'm a national sales trainer with Samsung Electronics. Uh, also with us today from Samsung is we have uh, Steve Pinojian, uh, Director of Marketing for Plasma. Uh, Mr. Mike Wood uh, works in our QA labs. And then also Mr. David Zhong, all the way from uh, Korea, uh, works in our research and development. And the only thing i got to say is, did David Katzmar really need a name tag? <laughs> so, anyways, uh, to begin, uh, Samsung's dedication when it comes to the market is really to, to take technology that we have today and make it better, and then also innovate in new technology for the future. Uh, when we look at what we've done this year with, with our TVs, is that we've really taken the next step forward in our plasma category. Uh, what you're going to find here uh, with our new F8500 is a new technology called the uh, Super Contrast Panel. What Samsung has done is that we've changed the pixel structure to where the pixel is now larger, so therefore it illuminates a higher brightness, uh, giving us 250% better brightness than last year. Uh, that is actually the same level uh, of a brightness level as, as an LED. So when you think about consumers and they're out there making that purchase today, they're, they're trying to tell themselves, okay, if I need brightness, I want to buy an LED. Or if I need contrast or you know dark colors, I want a plasma, right? Not anymore. Now we can, we can justify and say that this particular TV is the best TV that we've ever made and also is multi-featured for any customer. Does that make sense? Also, when we think about picture quality, we're thinking about really taking it to the next level. Uh, we did add a, a motion jutter canceler built inside the TV for when you watch Blu-ray movies. Uh, it helps uh, reduce any type of jutter that's going to come onto the television set. Uh, also, uh, the design feature with the F8500, it's made out of um, one piece of metal. Uh, if you actually have the stand, the stand also has a natural curve to it. So it gives a, a very elegant look no matter if the TV is on or the TV is off. And also, one thing that Samsung's very proud of, for the three consecutive years that we've been in the shootout, we've always had two TVs involved in the shootout. Uh, we have the F8500 this year, and then we also have the F8000 LED, which the Panasonic guy just wants to cover up a little. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, uh, with the F8000 LED, uh, some of the things that we've done this year is we've made some uh, precision black uh, improvements uh, when it comes to the color. Uh, when you look at the TV itself, uh, one of the things that you should notice right now with the widescreen bars is that we actually in introduced a new feature called Cinema Black. Uh, what the TV is going to do, it has a, it researches, uh, is an algorithm built inside the TV that's looking for the letterbox. And then when it finds the letterbox, it actually cuts the light off to that area, therefore giving us black bars instead of giving us gray bars during movie time. So it allows the, really, uh, the picture to come out and allows it to pop. Uh, also, the TV does have precision black technology that we introduced last year with our ES9000 series, our 75 inch, uh, where the LEDs can be individually controlled uh, to turn on and off to create a dark contrast on the screen. So that's now found in our F8000 series LED for this year. Uh, and one of the biggest uh, features that we've done is to correct screen uniformity. Uh, that's one of the biggest things with LEDs is that it's spot lighting and also light bleed. Everyone know what I'm talking about? The reason why that happens is because there's a lot of electronics behind the panels that cause a lot of heat, such as, your, uh, such as processors. What we've done is we've actually taken those electronics and put them down below in a small compartment. You'll, you'll be able to see it onto the side of the, uh, the TV itself. The TV has the panel and then it has an extra compartment on the bottom of it. Inside there are all the internal working parts of the TV, such as the processor and the inputs, things of that nature. Therefore, we are not allowing the heat that those components generate to affect the panel. So, you get the string uniformity as you see here. Anything you want to add? You look like you're going to add something. No, no. No? Kind of like it? <laughs> no, we'll, we'll talk later. Oh, we'll, we'll talk, talk later. later. <laughs> yes. He's like, hmm, yeah, we'll talk later. So, when it comes to both uh, technology and both categories that we have available, we do believe that we have uh, one of the best options on the market today. Uh, no matter if you're a consumer that's, that's die hard and you're an enthusiast when it comes to plasma, we have you. Or if you're a consumer that is more about the design and the aesthetics and really wants the thinnest TV on the market, we have that as well. Uh, then also with features uh, base, we have improved when it comes to our smart TV uh, capability. Now, I know a lot of people in this room, it's not really a, a high interest for you, but just to let you know with our smart TV capability, uh, we've actually made it easier than ever to use before. Uh, when it comes to smart TV, uh, a lot of consumers like to s sometimes not go towards it because it's hard and it's complicated. 
It's not really meant to work for them, not meant to be uh, easy to use. And what we've done this year is with our new Smart Hub uh, introduced in our TV, is that we've now separated it to five different panels. It allows it easier for the customer to get the content that they want to access, uh, especially with the on TV panel. Our on TV panel actually will make recommendations to the consumer based on their viewing pattern. So the TV starts to develop an algorithm based on what you like to watch and will give you recommendations through our S recommendation feature. So the consumer can make a wise choice on their, maybe that next TV show that they want to watch. We can also recommend movies to them based on their VOD and then also recommend applications to them based on which apps they use in the TV. Um, also, all controlled through our smart, Samsung Smart Touch remote control, easy to operate. And we also have voice navigation as well. So if I want to tell it to find me a movie with Tom Cruise, find me a movie with Tom Cruise. And the TV gives me results based on that. Find me a movie with Harry Potter. <laughs> Let's say we did. That's not Movies with Harry Potter. <laughs> the reason why I chose this one, because it shows you that what it's trying to do first is trying to find movies uh, on DirecTV, because that's what I programmed this to. So it's first trying to find movies that are essentially at no additional cost, because you already pay for the programming. And then if you go through the list, actually at the end it will show you movies that are available on video on demand. Uh, so then you'll be able to select that and then select the video on demand application that you want to use. Uh, so this allows the smart TV experience to be easier than what it ever has before. So the customer can ask for things instead of having to know exactly where to go to get that particular item. So, and then uh, with the five panels that we have, we have applications, we also have social networking, so you can tie in all your YouTube videos, Facebook and Twitter, uh, all directly uh, here. And then as well as the TV is enabled uh, with Skype, so if it has a built-in camera like the 8500 and the 8000 does, uh, then you can also get Skype information here as well. Uh, we have improved the smart interaction feature set when it comes to the motion. It now works in lower light conditions, uh, as well as it uh, uses two hand control. So you can actually grab it, uh, grab the image, zoom in and out, and you can rotate a picture. And we also have our uh, photos, videos, and music, which is the capability of being able to share through your ex external devices, such as your DLNA devices, like your computer, uh, tablets, cell phones, things of that nature. Now, also what is the thing there is that it's no longer a one screen option. For most consumers, it becomes two screen options. We now can connect our tablets and phones up to the TV to create a second screen. Uh, so if your wife is haggling you, telling you that you need to do the dishes or whatever, whatnot, but you're watching the football game, you can actually take what you see on TV, put it onto a Galaxy Note 10.1, and take it anywhere within the same Wi Fi network. Uh, so it allows you to watch your programming or in premium TVs like the 8500 and the 8000, you can actually watch something different on TV while she watches her favorite show, like American Idol or something. It's going to make some pretty dirty dishes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, that's all we really want to have. We don't want to get into too much else. Don't want to keep you from the real part of the shootout, right? Does anyone have any questions for Samsung in particular? We have a lot of Samsung brain trust in here that I can probably answer. One quick thing. Who decide that base, that curved base, because that's really kind of ugly looking. Some guy that makes a lot more money than I do. That's, that's a nasty look. <laughs> I don't know. We, we can definitely send that back. Mike is already putting that in his brain then. Right, <laughs> it's, 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 I, I, I first saw it, I thought it was like broken. I saw it as a bone in front. You're talking about the curtain before the yeah. TV? Hey, yeah. hey, Dean, I do want to tell you that wives and decorators love it. They People love it or hate it. it. it, 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 it you it, love it or hate it. It's one of those new middle grounds. Yeah, like a lot of people have seen it have gotten used to it. I'm sure like it's harder for kids to knock over it. You will have your own smart TV platform or are you going to join Google TV? No, we have our own smart, smart TV, TV platform. Alliance. Yeah, Samsung's so number one in smart TV, so there's really no... So not just yeah. smart TV will be... You. Yeah, we have our own. How, what do you think about apps? You know, who you you have enough app developers for this? Or you yeah, we currently have over 650 applications for the TV, uh, which is the largest in the industry. Do you develop yourself or you open up for No, we have. Developers? It's opened up. We have uh, SDK development available online. You can actually go to samsung.com backslash apps and download the SDK. It is, it is an open system. What, what about the um, upgradability? Because I think you, you yeah, know. thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. As Steve was beaming me with his eyeballs, like why talk about that? So uh, we have this feature called Smart Evolution. We gave a, a, 
customers a guarantee last year when they bought their 2012 premium product uh, that they'll be able to purchase a kit uh, that will upgrade their TV. Uh, now, we're making that promise come true as of this week. Um, the kit has released uh, for $299, and inside that kit, the consumer will get not only the uh, quad-core processing, natural language understanding where they can use the remote control because the remote comes with it. Um, they'll also get all the uh, hand feature, uh, the motion control uh, enhancements, and they get picture quality enhancements as well. And they get memory enhancements, numerous different things that we could probably go on and on and on about. And a new um, do what? New remote. Yeah, they get the new remote. So then they just take that kit and plug it into the back of their TV. It takes about five minutes. It updates the TV to the current smart TV standard, including uh, the picture quality enhancements as well. Now, we obviously can't change the physical structure of the TV, uh, but we changed uh, all the other components. Hey, Jesse? Yes. Does it change the processing? Yes. It yeah, it, it changes it both. Turn, it turns off the processor inside the It overrides. Overrides and it overrides. external. Yes. And wow. the video processing improves. That, correct. We added actually new uh, wow. video processing in the kit as well. Cool. Can you be more specific about what picture quality enhancements it has? Not this time. <laughs> but you can. I fed that <laughs> right to <laughs> Yes. I've got a question. Um, I guess a growing subculture online um, that I'm extremely interested in is uh, typically you buy a 120 hertz or a 240 hertz panel. Yes. And it's, it'll accept a 24, 30, or 60 hertz input, but not a 120 or 240 hertz input. Right. Is there. Like, I'm really curious to see whether any of these TVs... Well, you got to remember, the TV, you're buying a 120 or 240 hertz panel. Um, the TV is recognizing 60 hertz. I, I so that. it brings it in and it creates the 120 or the 240. But I'm looking for, like, the next step of that. Is there... Yeah. Are there that's, any that's more like Mike and, and David. That's an HDMI limitation. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Hands are tied at the moment. Yeah, processing the I mean, we're, all doing, we're all doing the processing post-processing. Even though the TV right. technically is, is 120 off the... You know, off the plant, we're all doing the processing. It's post, so we get the image and we make it 120 or we make it 240. You need display pull. Yeah. Like you, want to write. Display There's no yeah. There's 120 you can kind of like I don't know some TVs except like you know, the only thing I've seen is a computer that generates 120, yeah. right? Games. Yeah, yeah, games and stuff. Well, I guess I can get my TV at home 70 hertz, so right. and it starts freaking out. It so accepts 70 hertz. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> That's new. Just you gotta go into like I've used the PC to do it. Yeah, yeah. You set the driver settings to yeah, you know oh, right. customer yeah. Okay. It's right. it's a more advanced topic, but like it's something I'm really interested in. Okay. It provides a much better PC experience. Yeah, we do have some particular HDMI's that will accept certain inputs. Like uh, on this TV, HDMI. I want to say it's HDMI four accepts a PC input and it'll accept a Mac at 70 hertz. Um, so it all depends on the actual computer itself is what it what it'll accept it at. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then it all depends on the HDMI input as well, because some does one HDMI input will do MHL and another one won't. Okay. So it's it's all particular on that. But all of our TVs on a video signal will always accept 60 hertz and then create the 120 or the 240 when it comes to the LED. Yeah, this was just my opportunity to ask this. Cause I really sure. Like it's outside of the spec and it's not like you're not supposed to support it, but I'm just curious if any of do. So down the road, is there a likelihood since you have increased Light output now in the plasma, so mm -hmm. it might go to 4K. That that the that the plasma plasma light, the range down the road, there might be 4K. There, there's there's nothing that they've given us to indicate anything of that nature. No. Okay. Currently in 4K, we do have an 85S9 on the market, which is an uh, LED LCD uh, that's a full uh, backlit array. Uh, it's available uh, through Robert, right? And uh, for forty thousand dollars. So, <laughs> also, uh, real quick, uh, just so we can add this, uh, we do offer also what we call our Smart Evolution Kit. Uh, last year, we promised all of our premium customers that if they bought a, uh, a premium Smart TV from Samsung, that they'll be able to evolve their TV as we move forward with the Smart TV programs. Uh, we actually released this kit this week. It's $299. It's going to have uh, quad-core processing, uh, new picture enhancements for the TV, uh, the new remote, and other new features in it as well. Which TVs are compatible with? Uh, it's going to be 7500 series and higher. Those are our premium models that we have available. And the same thing for this year as well. This model and the 8000 also has the Evolution Kit expansion slot uh, in the back, so you'll be able to buy the Evolution Kit in the future for that those TV. The reason why we talk about our Evolution Kit so much is because right now there's no standard with UHD, uh, but there will be. 
And when that happens, that's why we have our evolution kit available. So when we have a, currently have a UHD on the market today, the 85S9, uh, when the standard becomes available, the customer will be able to get the evolution kit, plug it up, and they're now to that standard. With new inputs on it. Here's a question for you. There's new inputs on the, the kit. Just, I, well, I was going to clarify that. Yeah. On, the, on the S9, <laughs> yeah. the evolution kit is the input box. Right. It's the one connected oh, box. Right. On the s right. no, it's just the right. On the regular yeah. TV, it's just a, yeah, it's it's a, a card. plug-in, right. right. So are, are there any going to be any HDMI 2 TVs this year? Are these going to evolve into that? or? No, no, what we have right now is what we have for 2013. Okay. Yeah. We are going to have, you know, um, obviously 2014, so sure. it's a full year cycle. All right, well, thank you. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Robert, what do you get? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs>